I had a look through some of my first swims on Strava and I don't think I was particularly impressed with them. These are the sort of times that I was swimming per 100 meters back when I started. I also had a look at my first open water swim events to see how those were. I did the 750 meter swim in a triathlon relay and swam it in 16.09, so 2.15 per 100 meters. And a couple of months later, I did a local 70.3 as my first triathlon. My swim time was 39.02, so 2.05 per 100 meters. Now fast forward a couple of years and these are the normal sort of times for my pool swims and my best race swim time was 23.23 for a standard distance try, so 1.34 per 100 meters. So I've been through it. From feeling like a floundering fish to feeling somewhat slippery and quick in the water, I thought I would share my experiences with you and how I improved my swimming as someone who learned front crawl as an adult. Hopefully I can give you some points to work on and some motivation because it's definitely possible to get quicker in the water. I'll also go through some nutrition pointers too as after all, this is a nutrition focused channel. So first up on the list of things that I used to improve my swimming was a swim ladder. Something like this was so useful, especially as someone who was primarily self-taught because it gave structure and specific things to work on. The idea is that you start at the bottom of the ladder and focus on that part of your swim and you don't move up until you've mastered that or at least got competent with it. The idea here is that the bottom parts of the ladder are the foundations, the groundwork, and there's no point adding the finishing touches without that in place. So there's no point trying to work on your catch if you can't even breathe properly. Now, I vividly remember my first swim. I hadn't looked at any videos or read any guides and figured I'd just give it a go. It was in a 50 meter Lido and it was a beautiful day and I was pretty excited. I started swimming and I didn't even make it halfway across the pool. I genuinely couldn't swim 25 meters front crawl and I choked on water, badly breaststroked to the other end because of course I couldn't do breaststroke either and reevaluated my decision to start swimming. But I decided it would still be worth it. So I went home and looked at a multitude of swim videos and found one which talked about the importance of breathing and how to improve it while swimming. So I went back to the pool and no word of a lie, sat in the shallow end, practicing breathing out under the water, getting used to the sensation of turning my head to both sides and basically just getting comfortable with breathing around the water. I carried on practicing my breathing, including bilateral breathing and didn't bother with anything else at all. I figured that if I could breathe properly while swimming, then everything else would follow. So after several sessions, I felt comfortable enough to start working on something else, and I had ticked off that part of the swim ladder. You can use this to help master each fundamental as you improve your swimming. And you can always go back through the ladder to reassess your swimming and whether any bad habits have crept in. Now I wanted to swim faster, and I would be lying if I said that that wasn't my overall goal. But I had read early on that in order to improve your swimming, you might get slower first. So I took a different mental approach to swimming and I honestly think that this may be one of the most important things when it comes to getting better at swimming. If you always focus on the end goal and you want to continually get faster, you can get frustrated and demotivated and that's so dangerous when it comes to swimming. Swimming isn't like running or cycling where to some extent you can just try harder. You can muscle your way through, keep pushing yourself and get results. But I've found swimming doesn't quite work like that. It's so technique heavy, just putting in more effort can sometimes be worse. When you implement a new drill or are working on a part of your stroke, it's often pretty normal to get slower. So you've got to embrace that. Ignore the day-to-day -day swimming times and instead focus on the process itself. Now you might've heard quotes like journey before destination. From one of my favorite nerdy book series, by the way, Stormlight Archives by Brandon Sanderson, so good. But it's so relatable to swimming. Take small victories in being able to do a drill better, nailing bilateral breathing, and whatever habit you've practiced becoming second nature so that you can then focus on something else. If you do this, you'll give yourself the capacity to get better at swimming because without it, it's just so easy to focus on the numbers and get demotivated. It'll also make your swimming more enjoyable because you'll get more frequent positive feedback from the improvements that you make. To really improve your front crawl, 
you've got to be in it for the long haul and you need that mindset. The next big thing that helped me out was to understand that there is no such thing as an easy swim. It's just never easy. Now I say that a bit flippantly and it's obviously not quite true. But especially when you're first starting and trying to improve your swimming, you've got to have this in mind. Swimming can be tough mentally and physically. Unless you're the offspring of a dolphin and mermaid, us mere mortals won't be able to swim lots of times a week while still doing heavy run and bike sessions and expect to improve. Now this is individual, but I think you have to prioritize swimming if you really want to get better at it. But there are a couple of things to say here. You've got to do it gradually and build things up so don't go crazy with the volume immediately. You've also got to understand that because it is so demanding, if you don't recover properly, then you're just going to dig yourself into an overtraining hole. I have definitely done this with swimming by the way. Out of the three disciplines, it's the one that I have to be most careful about. So in my opinion, if you really want to improve with swimming, you do have to put the time and effort in over months and months. And it may mean that you need to prioritize it over the other disciplines. Because it's so technique heavy and muscle memory is a big part of that, you need to swim multiple times a week, every week. I usually swim three to four times a week and that's worked well for me. Before we move on, if you're finding this video useful, I would really appreciate it if you gave the video a thumbs up, as it really helps me to make a splash in the YouTube world. All right, so now let's talk about fun things like these. So, paddles, pool boy, snorkel, fins. Actually, I'm not gonna throw those. And, ah, the old favorite, much loved and much hated buoyancy shorts. Should new swimmers use these sort of things? Maybe. I think they all have a time and place, and the snorkel, pool boy, and fins more so than these shorts and paddles. As someone who's trying to improve front crawl, personally, I think you're better off sticking to the basics and getting good at those first. I see people using paddles when there's gaping errors with their stroke that need fixing first, or using buoyancy shorts, but they have absolutely no kick. In my opinion, you're putting yourself at higher risk of injury if you use paddles before you're ready and it's an ineffective use of your time. And using buoyancy shorts and claiming the old but I wear a wetsuit in a triathlon line just does yourself a disservice. Of course, if you aren't that bothered about your swimming and it makes it more enjoyable to wear the shorts, then fair enough, go for it. I've used them plenty of times, but if you really want to improve your swimming, I wouldn't use them regularly. The same goes for paddles. Use that swim ladder and focus on the parts of your swimming that definitely need improving. Find drills which target that one specific component and do it again and again until you've nailed it and then move on. Now linked with that, one thing which was incredibly helpful for me was to get someone to film me swimming. If you can do this, I would highly recommend it. Whether it's a parent, coach, friend, partner, random swimmer, lifeguard, filming yourself and then reviewing it can be so useful. Actually, don't ask a lifeguard, they've got a job to do. I've had it where I thought one part of my stroke looked awesome because I generally felt good and I was swimming well, relatively speaking. But then I looked at a video of my swimming and realized it really wasn't. <sighs> do I really do that? It's really difficult to just do it through feel alone. Another good example is when someone says something like, you're crossing over at the front of your stroke, so you go, all right, I won't do that. But when you review the footage, you realize just how much you're doing it or how you haven't actually corrected it when you thought you had. So you get that visual feedback, which is so important. And the other thing here is that while we won't go into it too much, I genuinely think drills are extremely useful for triathletes you just have to pick the right one for you. Everyone will have weaknesses or strengths to their swimming, and you need to find a drill which works on your weaknesses. And by recording yourself and looking at the footage, that can help give you something specific to target, so I think it's incredibly useful. So those are the main things that I worked on from a swim specific point of view. It can be a tricky thing to improve and incredibly frustrating at times, but also so rewarding. Now to complement your swim sessions, you should also consider your nutrition. There's two big ones for me, and the first is to do with what I said earlier about there being no easy swim. 
We won't go into this too much detail now because I have in plenty of other videos, but I wouldn't recommend swimming in a fasted state. Especially as a beginner, I would suggest eating before any morning swim sessions. This will help you to swim better during the session itself and to recover better. And I think this is probably something which is undervalued by a lot of people. Your nutrition after swim sessions is also super important and you should prioritize it. Because these swims do take it out of you, you want to make sure that you eat well afterwards. But a common mistake that triathletes make is not eating for quite a while after swimming. When you factor in getting out of the pool, having a shower, heading home or to work or whatever else, it can easily be an hour or even an hour and a half before you eat. So I'd recommend having a post-swim snack within 30 minutes of finishing your session, followed by a normal meal too in the hour or so afterwards. The post-swim snack helps to replenish your carb stores and help to repair your muscle tissue at least 20 grams of protein and 0.5 to 1 gram of carbs per kilogram of body weight is a good goal. This will help not only to recover directly from your swim session better, but also improve your training for your other sessions too. For me, it's been a long old process to get where I am now with swimming, but it's been a heck of a lot of fun too. You've got to play that long game with swimming because it's a bit of a capricious beast. Now, if you're looking to improve your training further, then you should make sure nutrition is a priority. You want to make sure that you keep your energy stores topped up so that you can train and recover well. I've done a video where I talk about why it can be so damaging to run low on your energy stores, and I've put that next to me here, and you can watch it by clicking it. Otherwise, have an awesome day, enjoy your swimming, and make sure to be in it for the long haul.